Hey everybody, this is Maya Good, and this is a writing update. As you can tell I'm exhausted. It is 12.28 a.m. on a Sunday night, and this is what a writer looks like pre-launch. I'm exhausted, but I had a lot of work to do for my clients, and so I needed to get that out of the way before I could work on my books. So here's what's happening because I haven't been on here since um, my Vona announcement. So I came really close, but everybody paid their deposits. So a space didn't open up for me, which is a total bummer. But I have other options that I'm thinking about for um, residencies to work on past. Um, there's a residency in Mexico I'm really interested in. And it's in January. And I will definitely be applying to Vona next year. I came so close. I think if I work on my novel and submit the first 15 pages, which I feel like are very strong, um, I'll have a good chance of getting in next year. So what's happening on the personal front? Um, I've been working hard on the authors that I, that I work with. Um, unfortunately I had a lot of personal stuff go on, so it's like the stuff just built up and I had like a ton to do and it really, um, distracted me from my writing, but I've been going through my stuff for a while and the four short stories that are completed. And when I say completed, they've gone through anywhere from eight to 23 revisions. I know that sounds excessive, um, but in my opinion, short fiction, I've, after reading so much short fiction, I feel like short fiction is really the pinnacle of the art form. And, um, I've worked really hard to get the details and I want to be a good writer. I don't want to publish stories and then look back at them and think, I really could have done better. So these stories have been worked really hard. Um, they've actually seen two different editors and they've been workshopped with other writers. So I feel like they're ready. And I had been sending them out to journals, but I'd felt very ambivalent about it for a couple reasons. The main reason being is these stories are part of a collection of stories that I'm building on. Um, I've got about... 13 more stories that um, I'm thinking about will fit with the collection and as a whole each story is is an independent short story but as a whole they say something about the nature of childhood and the thought of having them spread out amongst all kinds of literary journals and knowing the readership of literary journals and having to come to people and tell them they have to wait a year for each story before they can read it, or they have to pay anywhere from six to $13 to read it. It, it weighed on me because these stories are important to me and I want them read. Um, and the final straw was I was looking at Zadie Smith and, and there's a short story I've been wanting to read of hers for a really long time. I want to push no, it's it's in the Paris Review, and I've really been wanting to read Escape from New York, and you can only get it if you buy that that edition of the Paris Review, which eventually I will do, but I'm trying to save money um, to get my kid into an apartment, make sure he's all squared away so I can leave the country. And the thought of bleeding money on a journal just isn't going to cut it, given the fact that I'm already having to spend money on websites and other stuff. Like, you know, I spend money on books every single month for the podcast. I spend money on hosting. The podcast does not break even. Um, and so I decided that... I'm going to publish these myself. And this decision was really hard for me, be, mainly because the type of fiction I write, I don't really have a model of how to sell that. I've been working with indie authors for a year, 
and before that I was studying the indie movement um, because I, I was deciding what I was going to do with my own work. And when I was studying it, I, w- I was really leaning towards novels. I hadn't really considered short stories. And um, as I studied and learned, I've met short story authors that sell their work to journals and then after the rights wear off then they bundle bungle then they package them into collections you can tell i'm tired and they sell those or they go to a publisher and get the collections published and they're able there are a few that are able to actually make a living that way and it's sad that people look at short stories and they think, oh, they're shorter, so they must be easier. Uh, When actually I found short stories to be harder to write. Um, Not so much harder to write as far as the rough draft, but harder to polish, harder to perfect on that level. And the readership of short stories, I'm not talking about like science fiction short stories, because I do think Those readers are a little um, more forgiving. They're a little different. Like, they're very picky about things, but they're very picky about other things. Um, But I feel like literary readers, readers of literary short fiction, are extremely picky because there are just so many good literary writers out there. So I worked them really hard, and then I looked into the market for publishing short stories as an independent author. And I really didn't see any examples um, for literary writers. There are many examples for science fiction, romance, erotica. Um, I think those were the main three when I did my research that I found where people were publishing individual stories and there were readers for those stories. But depending on the market, you know, um, the question is, will that story be valued? You know, uh, in the romance market, uh, as far as like not regular romance, but like erotica romance, the short, the short stories definitely are valued as far as what people are willing to pay. Um, But in some of the other genres, people don't want to pay very much for a short story and so you find a lot of authors they put them out as collections or they put them out as you know just something extra it's not really um, a focus of their art form and so in my case these stories are definitely they've been a focus of the art form Um, the very first story that I put out uh, I worked on it for two years and it's a story that's very close to my heart and I'm really excited to get it out in the world and because of the fact that I'm not just putting these out because I want something out I'm putting them out because I feel like I feel like they have artistic value at this point and I feel like they're very strong and that they say something really important because of that I don't want to just put it out there and have it be, you know, have it not be a good reader experience just because a story is a short story. And so I'm working really hard to make sure that the reading experience is just as special as you would get if you were reading a novel. Hence why I'm so tired. Um, I looked at the various options to um, create my ebook editions, and I really didn't like any of them. Um, I didn't want to send it out uh, because I felt like trying to impart the vision of what I wanted to someone else would be difficult. I'm, I don't have a lot of money. They are short stories, so I don't I don't know what sales are going to look like. I don't think they're probably going to sell very much for for a while, and I want to be practical. At the same time. You know, this is what happens when you're a perfectionist. You have very high standards and you're broke. So I learned how to hand code ebooks using HTML and then do the conversions using Calibre. And 
I am so happy with the way the first book looks. It's beautiful. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's smooth. It's elegant. It's polished. And it's something that I feel very proud of having done. And I feel like the formatting does the words justice. Uh, the cover, it looks great. It's a very simple cover. Um, more than one person has said it reminds them of like the 1970s covers. They're illustrated covers. The illustrations were done with, by my daughter. Um, and they're beautiful. And so I'm, I'm very proud of her for that. Uh, eventually, I would like to get a get someone that is a professional um as far as like um typographer to uh to take those illustrations and perfect the font and really um take those illustrations that she did and make it so that the rest of the cover is up to that quality of the illustrations but for right now i feel like the covers are beautiful and they're striking and they definitely, each one fits with the story. Right now, the one she's working on, when it, when she showed me the preliminary drawings, I gasped because it was just, it was exactly how I envisioned the protagonist when I was writing the story. And it's really beautiful and it was emotionally provocative for me. So that's what's happening as far as the ebook versions. Now, because it's short stories, the question is, Am I just going to put out ebook versions? No, I'm not. Because I feel like short stories deserve, they deserve to be recognized as an art form in and of themselves, not just something lesser than a novel. So I'm actually going to have print versions of the stories and I'm doing ebook versions of the story. I mean, audiobook versions of the stories. And I'm really excited about the audiobook versions. Um, I go into the recording studio next week and the, I, you know, the question, it, people, a couple of people that I've mentioned were a little surprised I was going to do with the audiobooks for the short stories, but truthfully, I've listened to so many audible singles of short stories, um, when I do the Literary Roadhouse podcast, usually I read the book on paper, but occasionally I'm able to find it on Audible or I'm able to, if it's an older book, I'm able to find a LibriVox recording. And if the narrator is really good, you know, I feel like short stories just lend themselves beautifully to audiobook. Um, it's the perfect length for a commute. And Sometimes when I'm listening to a longer audiobook, the talking can get old. Like, um, I've tried getting through the biography of Che uh, multiple occasions. It's like 40 some hours of audible of audio, and I've never even been able to get through it. But short stories, when I listen to them in audio, they lend something to the story. And they're quick and they're very, they're, there's something very wonderful and digestible about it. And frequently for the podcast, I will read it on paper and then turn around and listen to it in audio again. That's something I do quite a bit. Um, and I think in the future, I think short stories are going to become very popular for audible books, for audio books. Um, I've listened to several collections of of short stories using Audible, and I've loved them. I've absolutely loved them. Um, there's a writer, Anne Prulo, Pru Prulix. Um, she she has a I'm really bad pronouncing her name at 12:30 at night, um, but she has a wonderful collection on Audible of. Montana or Missouri stories, I can't remember which, they're mid, very beautiful Midwestern tales, and listening to those, each chapter was an individual story, and I would listen to one when I go do an errand, I would listen to one when I was waiting in line, waiting at like, you know, a doctor's visit or something, and it was just wonderful, and so all of my stories will be available in audio. Um, you know, also, you know, having ADD and, and knowing people that 
have dyslexia and things. I, I just, it's something I feel really strongly about. I will never do fiction that's not available in audio. So that's what's happening as far as my writing and as far as my website. My website has gone through so much upheaval in the last two weeks in preparation for this, and I have a lot more to go. Um, I redid the front page, but I haven't gotten to the bottom part of the front page. I just managed to get the books up and, you know, um, do some changes in the menus, but preparing for lunch there's just so many details like little details that um you want to think about if you're going to do it right things that I never would have thought of if I hadn't have been working with these indie authors for the last year I there are so many things I'm doing that literally I never would have thought of um if it hadn't been for the fact that I've been working for people that have been doing indie authorship for a really long time and I've seen their systems and I've seen the software I've seen the problems with some software I've seen what works what doesn't um, and it's one thing to read it or to listen about those things on podcasts but it's another thing to get in there and actually work with some of this some of these things and I've come away from the last year having a list of what I need to address as I publish because when I went in I didn't know if I was going to self-publish uh, and so I've been making a list over the last year of things to think about if I ever self-publish make sure I think about this if I ever self-publish make sure I use this and not that um, and when I finally decided to indie to indie publish uh, my short stories all that list is coming in really handy. In addition, I'm working on a novella, which is actually part of the collection. It's part of the series. It's weird calling it a series um, because each story is in independent. They're not even all in the same genre. They're all literary in a way, but I've got one that borders on horror and the novella is speculative fiction. But, um, I'm going to be publishing the novella and and I'm looking forward to it. It is it's amazing and I'm actually thinking about writing it as a play and seeing if I can get it on stage, you know, if if see if maybe a a small independent actors group would want to put it on because I think it would lend itself really well to the stage. It's minimal characters. It's only got two settings, but it's very powerful emotionally. So that's something I'm thinking about as well. It's going to be a really busy year for me. And yeah, I'm going to cut this off because now we're at 18 minutes, but that's my update. I'm going to be having more of these. I need to figure out a schedule of, of when I can update and how I can get these videos up and make time so maybe I can actually edit them and have them well produced someday and in a land far, far away. Because I, I'm i finally taking all of the things that I've learned over the last six, seven years and I'm putting them into action. And it's interesting because all of those lessons have They've helped direct me in how I want to publish, but at the same time, I definitely feel like I'm forging some new ground here. So that's where I'm at, and until next time, ciao.